Good day and welcome to today's free ATA and Kana webinar, the fifth in our series. It's about the five questions you must ask when implementing better customer service. Today's session is sponsored by Kana and powered by Citrix GoToWebinar. Over the next hour, with the help of today's special guest, we'll be covering what we all strive for, which is better customer service. And many of us are in the midst of implementing or planning to do exactly that. There are many hurdles that have to be taken and more often than not, the improvements we set out to achieve are diminished by the complexity of the undertaking. We'll be exploring how and what those five questions are that you must ask yourself industry best practices on how to resolve these potential roadblocks, achievements of organisations like yours. Plus, we're going to answer as many of your questions as possible. So, who am I? Fiona Keogh, CEO of the ATA, and hello to each and every one of you. Now there's going to be a few more people that will be joining us today and I can see that we're gradually totting up more and more people. So while everyone settles in, I'm going to just run through some housekeeping with you. We do need you to interact with us today so that you get the best benefit out of the session. There's no need to take too many notes because we'll be providing you with some options at the end of today's webinar so that you can choose what you'd like to receive. So will it be slides of the webinar, a recording of the webinar, a white paper entitled Developing a Multi-Channel Customer Service Strategy and a call from Kana or everything and we hope you want to have access to everything. So, a bit of practice guys, there are two ways that you can interact with us today. Um, you can use the question pane uh, to type in your question from the guest speaker and provide your comments from time to time. And we'll also have a full Q&A session today with the speaker at the end of the webinar. Um, we possibly won't cover off your burning questions as we go through because we want to make sure that you get to see and hear the richness of everything that's being shared today from our guest speaker. So we need you to try out the question pane now. So let us know about the weather uh, where you're actually engaged in today. So if you start typing in the question pane today, and let, let us know, so I'm seeing it's cloudy, it's sunny, it's overcast, it's hot and sunny. It's hot enough to cook an egg, thanks Debbie. Um, bright and sunny, um, someone's indoors, uh, sunny in Melbourne, that's unusual. Bit cloudy but quite warm. Okay guys, it looks like you actually have got that question panel mastered, so that's absolutely fa fabulous. So if you're having any problems today uh, with your internet connection, um, you can click on the control panel and switch to the telephone and use the toll-free number for where you're calling from and the access pin will also appear on the screen. Or you can raise your virtual hand and we'll get someone to help you out while we're in today's session. And we actually have somebody who's already raised his hand. That's okay, Jess will have a look at that. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker today, uh, Sashin Devanka, who is the Manager Product Marketing uh, from Kana Software and he's coming to us today from Sunnyvale in North, Northern Cal California. Sashin, over to you. Thank you very much Fiona for the introduction. Hello everyone, um, as Fiona mentioned, my name is Sachin Damankar, I work for Kana Software and I'm the manager for product marketing for one of our product lines in the US. So we're going to talk about the five questions that uh, Fiona has already said we will be discussing this evening, but I don't want to keep any suspense and I want to keep it very simple and clear, so I just want to put it out there the agenda that some of the key questions organizations need to ask themselves are very simple. Understand what customer service is. Before you do that, you need to understand who your customers are. 
why provide better customer service? Who creates this customer experience? Everyone is talking about this buzz. When to deliver this great customer experience? And finally, I would also like to touch, at, touch on the blueprint for designing a customer experience. No doubt it will vary based on your business vertical, your need, and the sector you come from. But on and all, these are the topics I'll be covering this evening or this afternoon. Thanks, Sashin. So we have our first poll, uh, which is customer service. The word custom is a pronoun, an adjective, a noun, or a rude word. So come on, guys, answer the poll. Sashin, while we're just getting everyone to give us the answer to the poll, um, Let's, uh, let me ask you a question. So here's your first test. Um, so what are you seeing in terms of customers opting for multi-channel? Uh, there seems to be a lot of buzz within the market to, to try and leverage off all the mobile devices and all the touch points that customers now have with the organizations. So as more and more adoption of these devices and these technologies happening, what organization doing is trying to engage them some more with the customers using that particular touch point. So obviously what's happening is the solutions that are coming on the market are being enabled for such technology devices. So because these solutions now exist, customers are now wanting more and more engagement with the organizations. And as a result, organizations are now wanting more and more of these solutions to serve the customers at all touch points, be it mobile, be it web online, be it even SMS for example, or chat or even virtual assistant, for example. Okay, I think we're going to close the poll. And Jess, can you just launch the response? I think uh, the good news is uh, that nobody thought custom was a rude word. So that was that, <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, and we've got a, a pretty close vote between adjective and noun. But on that note, Sashin, I'll hand back to you because I'm sure you're going to tell us a little bit more. Sure, certainly. So, let's look at what the dictionary says. A little bit of latency going on there. Is that nearly there? Are we there yet? There we go. There we go. So, the word custom. Traditional, widely accepted way of behaving and doing something specific to a society, place, or time. Something that we do habitually. One does all the time. It's custom. Right? That's the noun, but can be used in an adjective as well, meaning made to order, something for a particular customer, something tailored, something, something specific. So that brings me to the whole definition of customer. Of course, there are a number of definitions in the dictionary. The one I believe best suits us for this today's discussion is a person or organization that buys goods or services from a store or business or a personal thing of specified kind that one has to deal with. So if you notice in these definitions, there is a strong message of repeatability and delivering something tailor-made to specification. Customer service builds on these basic tenets of repeatability and tailoring. We want our customers to come to us for repeat business because we can offer them something specific for their specific needs. And in recent times, a growing number of analysts are also reporting that good customer service is how successful companies differentiate themselves from competition and earn their customers' business over and over again. This just demonstrates how important it is for organizations to continually improve customer service as something we've all been striving to do over the years. So who are your customers? now? There are a number of ways that industries and organizations try to identify their customers, looking at the buying capacity, the pricing, the product features they're offering, the service design, for example. Yes, that's all great. But the question we really do ask ourselves is, where are your really customers? Who, where are they? Who are they? Now, we have internal team members, our peers, our managers, our team leaders. We have colleagues in other departments, or within departments, across the spectrum. Anyone we transact with at work, be it your colleagues or other co-workers, in a repeatable manner, yes, you can classify them as a customer. 
more often than not, these interactions are targeted at the overall ability for an organization to deliver a great customer experience for the external parties, for the external customers. And from the external side of things, of course, you have individuals or businesses who pay for a product. Yeah, that's, that's a given. But it's key that you understand that the, your customer identification doesn't happen just beyond the line, but it also happens uh, within the internal organization as well. You may have other examples you want to think of, for example, business partners or B2B um, customers that you may have who are responsible not just for buying your end product, but delivering a product or service that further enhance your ability to deliver great customer service. So what is customer service? At the heart of providing customer service is the whole element of notion of respect. That is the first step which involves respecting your business employees and sort of customers within the organization. That leads to having a fruitful relationship with external customers. Acknowledge that we transact daily with our internal customers, our managers, our colleagues. Share knowledge and information in an open manner with them. Using this concept also influences how colleagues and individuals act towards each other and eventually how they will deal with your customers. The more collaborative an environment, the more empowered an organization becomes in delivering great customer service. All of these enhance the practice of providing your external customers with a positive and helpful experience before, during, or after buying something, be it assisting in purchasing a product or providing support after a product or service has been acquired. Eventually, the goal is to improve the quality of service. You need to get a gold star for your quality of service you provide. Interesting stats here. Why should we strive for better customer service? Why not, why not just provide a product and provide simple service? Yes, it's working, it's not working. Okay, thank you very much for that. The number of um, research surveys have revealed the, the following stats I'm looking at. I'm sorry, I should have actually put the references or I haven't apologized for that. But let's look at the good side of things, why we must improve. Loyalty pays. But 86% of consumers will pay more for a better customer experience. Customer stuff. When you provide customers with great service, stats tells us 81% will tell their friends and family about it, which is great. Word of mouth. Fantastic. Trust counts. 73% of firms trust recommendations for friends and family, while only 19% of the person trust direct mail. That's a shift in how things have changed over the years. Look at it from the flip side of things. Opinions matter. More than 60% of customers are influenced by other consumers. A trend that's fast, steadily on the rise, especially with the advent of social media and the consumers can interact with each other at a very different level in the public space, in the social space. It is important to understand that consumers which have a positive sentiment about the organization will spread the word, and a negative one will also do the same, so it may hurt. One strike and you're out. Stats from the US, 81% of Americans have decided never to do business with a company again because of poor customer service. And they will hang up on poor service. That's a trend that we have seen not just in the US, but also in Australia, New Zealand, and Europe as well. It's, it's a global phenomenon. Six out of ten customers will have ditched company because its telephone customer service has been so bad. Yes, these are trends. Yes, they will change in the future. But the emerging pattern is very consistent over the last few years, what they have seen. It's a bit of delay here. So, all this buzz about customer experience and the contact center have been totally involved in creating a great experience for the customer. But where does this, who creates this experience? So I want to quickly look at the, some of the basic, the simple example of what happens 
let's say you have an overarching strategy which will determine the product and service to offer. The product development creates the product. Marketing ensures that a product is ready for launch. Transition the product from sales to service, uh, sorry, uh, marketing to sales. And then it gets into the support and service cycle. It's not what that's said to the customer, but the experience creation process begins pretty much earlier in the, in the process before it hits the contact center. Marketing ensures that there's requisite memory awareness in the market. Sales will provide the necessary information based on what was delivered by the product team. And the customer service team must ensure that they are part of all the teams, departments involved in the design of the experience. So when does this experience truly begin? The experience creation process begins way before hitting the service point. At every stage, a message is sent to the prospects. As you progress to the state of the process, direct or indirect messages are sent to the wider market, thus beginning the creation of that experience. What the customer service team provides is a package experience rather than encompassing all the messaging from previous stages. They are the ones who need to be aware of what was said during the sales cycle, during the marketing process, during the product development, and what the strategy was. The customer experience really begins at the from an early stage than what meets the eye in today's world. So that brings me to the whole topic of feedback. We have heard about it a number of times, continuous feedback, yes it's imperative, it's important. A lot of focus actually does get laid on consumers, consumer feedback and pushing it into the customer service or sales. But it's also important that we collect feedback from customer service agents as well. Encourage collection of feedback for all departments engaged in creating and delivering the customer experience. It's not a siloed approach, it has to be an, a holistic approach, it has to be a combined approach. Of course, collecting feedback from customers is widely accepted, but take feedback from a CSR, feed it back into sales, take feedback from CSRs and sales, feed it back into marketing, let the product team know what the shortcomings were, let them know what the pain points are, push it into a continuous improvement cycle. This will definitely improve your customer and front-end customer service ability. I want to talk about a small example. I encountered this a uh, few years back when I was working um, for a, a financial institution. So the, the companies to offer a number of products, investment products, life insurance, general insurance, etc. And the company was also a product of several mergers and acquisitions that happened in the past. Well, the products were designed, the product and service were designed in a very, in a great manner. They did the job. But there were some fundamental issues with that. And who was taking the brand? It was the contact center taking the brand. The example I'm trying to show here is a very simple change of address. So, for the investment side of things, the process and policy procedures said one thing. For life insurance, it said something else. And for general insurance, there was a different process altogether. Whereas from the customer side of things, I'm only changing one address. I changed it when I had my same investment in the company. I changed my address a couple of months back. When I got to talk to the life insurance company, they don't have my address. They have my old address. And this going, went on for quite some time, basically. The net result was that the contact center was so loaded with all these queries about customers not having um, the addresses updated at the right time, the right moment. A lot of it was blamed on the systems that we're using, that the systems were siloed too. So these systems did not speak to each other. So if you look at it from a holistic perspective, the experience for the customer has been very poor. And to take it back to my example before, your design is the most important one. Your experience begins much earlier in the process than what the customer service agents can actually do.
this may be a familiar scenario. I'm sure that we again all resonate with this. We may have definitely have seen this happen more than once. But just sort of reinforces the fact that we can, yes, we can make a joke about it. Yes. But this these jokes are also based on you know, true incidents happening. So when would you deliver good customer service? Some are created at design time, as I said earlier on. You may not necessarily have control over that. The one you have control over is primarily customer facing. And things have changed over the last few years with the advent of social media. We have a plethora of social media sites coming up now, and customers use it like a, like a soapbox to voice their opinion, and we do that ourselves too. It's a means for us to get an opinion out there, unabashedly. We will talk about shortcomings of an organization, we will complain about the service, and when necessary, yes, you will compliment them too, which is great. It's primarily validation of what we said when creating that experience when a product or service was designed. When a customer service agent faced the customers, it's like a battlefield sometimes. And they are faced with the with the big, big, big task of validating what was achieved during the design, during marketing, during sales, and bringing it to fruition when they engage your customers. What's happening today is the number of channels available to customers is increased. And hence, they are demanding service across all channels. Interestingly enough, let's look at some curious figures, shall we? Forty-five percent of them say, hugely frustrating for the customers. They will abandon an online purchase if they can't find a quick answer to their question. 66% say valuing the time is the most important thing a company can do. Provide a customer with a good online experience. People are online savvy disease. They know it can be quick and it's really painless when it's not. Twenty-nine percent say the preferred is online customer service. But what stands out very clearly is the message that's coming out of value my time. Customers don't want to keep on repeating themselves over and over again. And as a result, you may have noticed that a lot of customers hop on different channels as well. Sometimes they're on chat room to get the same answer. If not, they go online, they send emails, and at large so they call you as well, which is probably the most expensive channel. As an organization, you don't want them calling you all the time. But these trends are being reported across the globe, not necessarily just in Australia, UK, or the US, but it's a trend that's happening a lot in Asia as well. That brings us to the discussion of multi-channel service. Six or six percent of customers who switch companies did so result a poor customer service. They're also using more than six different channels for contact and service providers. Why would they do that? Sometimes they're not satisfied with the answers they get over one channel. Sometimes they get different answers when they go on a particular channel. So they will try every every means to contact an organization. And it's not just something that's specific to private sector. This is happening in the public sector as well. As more and more city councils and government bodies start adopting uh, social media, um, presenting their applications on mobile devices, on laptops, iPads, etc., that trend continues to follow as members of this of the community as a citizens, we will undertake that, that option and go on different channels and provide feedback or engage with them. So 
It's nothing new in today's world and today in today's day and time. Organizations definitely know that they have they have the challenge social media. They have they have embracing that. They don't understand the need to serve different channels. But there's the struggle of efficiency. How best to do it? Struggle with cost. How do you prioritize these channels? How do you protect existing invest, uh, investments? More often than not, they find themselves trapped in silos. They may have point solutions for email, for serving web analytics, point solutions for social media, for mobile. What that's doing is creating a fragmented experience for your customers. Customers have to repeat themselves and they go across different channels. Agents, agents struggle with solutions to log on to. You provide them with multiple solutions. Use Facebook and Twitter to respond to this particular social media channel. Use email for this particular type of query that comes in. On an average, what happens is the customer experience becomes unpleasant. And the quality of service goes down because more often than not, if you're using multiple uh, channels in a non-unified manner, your responses tend to become inconsistent across these silos. What you really need is something seamless, something easy. You need your information to be accurate. You need to, be able to provide contextual information at the right time. Give it to your agents when they need it the most. Knowledge at the point of action. That will improve your frontline staff confidence. Allow them to respond quickly and consistently, not just one channel, but all channels, including telephony as well. The prime director, you create a seamless experience for your customer. It has to be seamless across all channels and the customer should not have to repeat himself or herself more than once. So this brings us to poll two and it three does. And you. Yes, thanks Sachin. Um, I think you were talking about my life um, as, as you were speaking. So we have a very complicated poll here. The word seamless means either that you so well or it is smooth and without seams or obvious joints. So guys, if I could get you to answer that question, though, um, the poll. While they're doing that, Sachin, um, in your experience, what have you been seeing um, around organisations? Are they actually prioritising um, channels in terms of how they service them? Yes, there are, there are quite a few um, schools of thought around how to prioritize these channels, um, once based on volume of um, queries to get could be email or tele telephone, for example. So the tendency is to try and service those in the first instance. Uh, there's also resourcing availability. That's, um, that's a um, uh, parameter used in prioritizing a channel. And of course, there's cost to serve a channel as well. However, with the um, advent of social media, um, volume seems to have sort of changed a little bit now and a lot of lot of organizations are opting to try and collect the cost and use the, the cheaper social media channel for providing responses. But having said that, I mean the need for having a unified desktop and you have a solution that actually encompasses everything, it's, it's become more and more uh, important as organizations grow more aware of what's available in the market to have a omni-channel or multi-channel solution to serve all customers across all channels and devices. Absolutely. So Jess, can you release the um, outcome of the poll? And you'll be pleased to know that 100% of um, our attendees uh, have suggested that uh, seamless is smooth and without seams or obvious joints. So back over to you, Sachin. Thank you. Okay, well done everyone. So, I would just like to talk a little about the blueprint. But before we do that, uh, kudos for everyone. Everyone got it right. It's smoother without seeing the obvious joints. So, 
So we talked a little bit about who the customers are, the customer experience, um, when to deliver the customer experience, but how do you go about actually doing that? What what's what's the blueprint? What's what's we need we need we need some sort of a blueprint, a map, so that we can try and chart the territory. Of course, no territory is the same, it's not alike, and there are challenges as you actually implement solutions and implement processes in, in different industries, public or private, etc. But there is a common blueprint that has worked very well for a lot of organizations, but it's small or large, basically, and we'd like to talk about it now. So at the heart of your strategy, your, your customer service strategy, to build a knowledge foundation, it's a strong, robust, accurate. Arm your agents with the power of knowledge. Give them access to this. Let them understand, let them learn, let them know everything that's in there. Arm your customers with, with self-service. Give them the power to serve themselves. Take the load off your customer service agents. Offer multiple channels via omnichannel solution. The days are gone where you can only rely just on email or phone. Customers and citizens are demanding more and more service through number of devices, number of channels. Listen to the intent of voice. It's very important. What are they saying to you and what are they saying about you? A distinction that needs to be made. Keep a data consistent across all channels. You can't have inconsistent data across the channels. You end up giving inaccurate responses and causes a lot of angst, not just for the agents, but for the organization as a whole. Be proactive. Help our customers when they need to. Help them make a purchase or payment. Send them personalized messages rather than sending them generic messages. Use shared processes with knowledge. Provide them knowledge when it's required the most, when they're about to make a decision or they're struggling with the procedure, the policy. And last but not the least, improve continuously. Build a foundation for a strong reporting mechanism. Feed it through the system at all times. Let's look at some of the items in a little bit more detail. Customer service agents is more than often than not far too removed from the product development, sales, marketing. So what we need to do is provide them with the right knowledge. Keep it at the center of all your channels. Keep it current. Ensure your solution allows you to keep it contextual. Make sure knowledge is available at the required points of action. That's the most critical thing. You don't want your agents to be struggling to find the right information knowledge when they're about to serve a customer. <coughs> Self-service. Yes, we have heard and seen it all. This is the low-cost channel and drives your zero contact resolution. With the right knowledge base, empower your customers with self-service. Use your valid agents to resolve higher priority issues. Take them away from answering questions about what time does the center open or the, the trivial questions. Get them to focus on the critical ones. Listen to the intent of the voice. Understanding the intent of customer voice using text analytics or natural language processing is very powerful. Time and tested technology now is no longer new. Use categorization to understand the context. And with the right tools, take preemptive action. Identify risks before they become issues. Understand who the influences are in the social space, for example. Use social monitoring tools. Learn what the user is saying about you, your brand, your services in the social space, not just what they're saying to you by email or feedbacks or surveys. Make sure your data is consistent across all channels. Be it billing information or product details, for example, all channels must access the same data. Yes, the presentation mode may vary a little bit based on the channel, whether it's a chat interface or maybe email. 
but it needs to information provided needs to be consistent. All agents of all channels must respond with the same answer for the same question. It really helps eliminating all conflicts and also reinforces the power of collaboration and collaborative tools. Present your users with the right information, be it an online portal or online chat, for example. Personalize the communication. Provide knowledge at the points of decision and action. Make it both for agents and customers. Weed out the noise from the context. This will not only improve your customer relationships, but it also allows your agents to improve um, the service by by boosting the confidence when you're dealing with customers. Personalization also allows you to build a good relationship with the customers as well. Just a delay here. Be the process for changing an address or initiating a returns policy. For example, ensure that each step stage agents have knowledge about the process. Save valuable time in looking for the right procedures and providing responses. Every process that they go through needs to be infused with knowledge. It allows you to maintain the quality of the knowledge base, to take feedback from them, and improve your first contact resolution as well. And last but not the least, improve continuously by measuring. Measure, measure. Benchmark your performance. Determine your yardstick. Measure the quality, your time, your SLAs. What's the cost for serving a customer? Create actionable plans for improvement and identify new opportunities within those. These metrics alone allow you to not only improve your customer service at the front line, but also improve your marketing, your sales and your product design and development as well. Also help you understand what's happening with the competition as well. So what is the blueprint again? Build a knowledge foundation. Arm agents with the power of knowledge. Provide self-service. Multiple channels. Look at omni-channel solutions. Listen to the intent of the voice, keeping data consistent across all channels, be proactive, infuse processes with knowledge, improve continuously. But when we talk about implementing a customer service experience or taking our customers on a journey, doesn't matter whether you're at early stages of that or middle or even the late stage. These strategies involve a lot of change management. That's very important. A well-managed change will lead to a successful adoption of technology and processes. As you can see, it's not just implementation of technology. There are people involved in that. Changes to processes need to happen. And the overall culture of the company and organization starts changing as we adopt new processes and new technology. And as Darwin rightly said, in the long history of humankind, those who learn to collaborate improvise most effectively have prevailed. The same can be said for your organizations as well. An interesting slide here. Forty percent of them in, in the survey, it's a kind of older survey, but I thought the stats were pretty, uh, pretty relevant to this want better human service. Kind of says that these processes and tools that we talk about, there must be enablers for better human service. View them as support structures. They're not necessarily a replacement for human service, but to better enable the quality of service that you provide to the customer. And have a couple of uh, customers here that we, we have at Kana. Um, that shows some of their successes here. Scottish Power 
a pretty reasonably uh, big utilities organization and how they've actually used the kind of solution using an omnichannel solution to improve efficiency and improve customer service as well. And you can see it's been a five time winner for best online service in, in the customer satisfaction survey. Also achieving targeted cost savings and improvements in efficiency, etc. And the other big player in the communication industry is Cox Communications here in the US. And they have about 4,000 agents, 5 million customers. But they all share the same knowledge base. And it just shows the power of um, how sharing a knowledge base across your customers and the agents can make a huge difference. <coughs> they brought up to the mentality of the right ones. That means they author their knowledge content once, basically, and then rely on the solution's ability to continually um, take feedback from the agent and customer and improve the knowledge base as, as it starts getting mature. Of course, you can visit our website at kana.com to download some case studies and review some success stories that we have available online. But that will bring me to the Q&A session. But Fiona, you may want to chime in here and uh, Absolutely. And we don't have any questions as yet, but I bet people are typing furiously. You know, as you were talking, Sachin, I was really thinking about um, some of the words and the language that you were using um, around actionable plans and collecting the right data and having the right measurements in place. And it's really about going, I, I think, back in many respects and really rethinking um, and collecting the right information from the multiple sources that we have. Um, as we go forward and as customer access uh, through various channels expands over time, we really need to be prepared to be able to give a, con to A, have a consistent view of the customer, but to also be able to give consistent answers to customers because it stops that bad demand in terms of testing different channels, uh, whether they're going to get the right answer or not. I do have a question, but it's no. Um, Sam, you'll get a copy of the presentation. When are you complete the exit survey, depending on what you pick? Um, so that's that. So guys, you must have some questions. Um, this is something that I know, you know, when I when I meet with members, um, that comes up time and time again is that we seem to do very well in the voice area, which is the the more traditional customer interaction channel. But as we're expanding to more and more channels and um, endeavouring to be consistent, that that is really a challenge. Um, in fact, I was at a couple of events in, in the last week where people were really, really challenged with um, just the basics, I think. So, Shana, you, you got any other comments that you would make on that? Are you seeing anyone other than, you know, uh, you know someone in Australia perhaps that's um, doing some great work with customers? Well, well I mean, you're absolutely right that um, the reliance on telephone basically is important. Um, however, it is the most expensive channel for organizations. Yeah, I think everyone acknowledges that. And of course, the, the telephone does provide the ability to get some form of human element, personal touch, personal customer service there. But um, the, the, the trend has been that customers are now talking more openly, not to the organization, but about them in the social space. That puts a completely different spiel. And to counter that, for example, if you look at what Telstra have done, and it's, they've, they've come up with their crowdsourcing site, where you have the customers helping themselves. So they've also taken off that pressure of the um, call centers. And that just allows each of the customer to engage with other customers and start looking for answers. What they've also done is to put their experts on the panel as moderators and responders to specific questions which other customers may not be able to answer. And just because more of a debate sometimes, more often than not, within the customers, that's when the experts come in basically and provide a quick Telstra approved answer. So yes, the, the, the voice channel is important. But that's, it, it really does take some concentration there. But the trend is for users to go online in the social space and interact in a more proactive manner with other 
by the users. And as you said, to use, you know, up to nine different or six different channels to interact. Well, no other formal questions at this point in time. So I think, you know, as we were discussing before we started that, you know, as I said to you when I looked at the presentation, my goodness, it's very, very thorough and, and I'm not surprised. I think you've probably answered um, a lot of the questions along the way. But as, oh, no. Okay, I've got one. We don't want to leave without it. How do you measure customer satisfaction consistently through multiple channels? Social media is generally more negative than other channels in our experience and that's from uh, Christopher Gifford. Right, so the way it's done is not just by reviewing feedback surveys or looking at channels in a siloed manner. I mentioned earlier on a presentation listen to the intent of the voice, listen to the sentiment of the voice. And what we as Khan provide is what we call experience analytics, which takes your feedback from all these channels and consolidates them into, into a report which will show you what the intent and the sentiment of that particular channel is. Not, and also give a cumulative combined sentiment index for that particular conversation that we have. Sentiment is something that is not binary. It, it, it's neither a yes nor a no. It could be positive today and it will have a variance in the positive day later and it may drop to a complete dead negative after a few days. And then it will rise up again based on where you are in point of time and just serving the customer and what's happening with the product or service that you have So to drive consistency, you cannot look at a particular channel and say, well, through the web it seems positive and through the um, social is kind of negative, on the chat is kind of positive. You have to look at the combined analytics of the sentiment and then view that result from a holistic perspective. That's what Kana Experience Analytics allows you to do. So be it text analytics, be it your feedback surveys, be it social media content, be it speech analytics, for example, we can do that as well. And then provide you with an understanding of what is the true sentiment across all the channels. Right. So there's, there's a heck of a lot of more work that we need to do, you know, in, in terms of really un understanding um, the consistency piece and, and whether it should be consistent or not as well. So um, we're almost at an end, but I would encourage everyone uh, to complete the exit survey. There are five very compelling reasons to do that. Um, getting a recording of the webinar, the slides from the webinar, uh, a white paper that's being offered free of charge from Kana, developing a multi-channel customer service channel, a call back from Kana, or have everything, which I know I would do. So Sachin, thank you very much. I know last week you were sounding, I'm not sure whether you were Barry White or Kamal, <laughs> but you were not a well person. Um, so I'm so glad you've recovered and you're able to join us. To all of you who have um, very kindly changed your calendars so that you can be part of today's event, I also thank you. Um, and we look forward to being together with you in the not too distant future. Thanks everyone for today. Thank you everyone. Thanks for joining in. Thank you.